Coming up on Tech News Today, why Skype went down, at least part of the theory. Also, a Super Verizon Windows Motorola phone rumor that we'll construct out of whole cloth. And the CIA says WTF, but it's not what you thought. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Wednesday, December 22nd, 2010. Tech News Today brought to you by Slingbox, which just turned your iPad into a television. Go look. Slingbox introduces their new iPad app just in time for the holidays. So now you can watch your home TV on your iPad anywhere you take it. Check it out at Best Buy or Slingbox.com. And by the Eco Imagination Challenge from GE. GE and its partners are awarding $200 million to ideas that help build the next generation power grid for the 21st century. For more information and to view and comment on the winning ideas, go to ecomagination.com slash challenge. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I am Becky Worley. I'm Jason Howell. And uh, we are winding down the year. Only two more episodes of Tech News Today left. Silver bells. Tinkle bells. Did you know silver that that song was originally bells. called Tinkle Bells? Understand <laughs> And then they changed said, the title. I'm happy it's now silver. You don't want to call that Tinkle Bells. <laughs> it's Christmas time and there's no stinking news, but... There's a little bit of um, rumor mongering afoot. Yeah, we got a little bit of something, something for you today. Uh, some some Skype skullduggery, some WikiLeaks updates, and a Connect rumor that just broke. It did. Newsflash. The, um, the newsflash. Uh, I've, been, I've been waiting so long to use that drop. Oh my God. Well, you know, I can't even do it justice, Tom. Use your radio voice. Come on, man. There's been no shortage whatsoever of PC control schemes using Connect. But up until now, every bit of it has been without Microsoft's official blessing. So says and gadget <laughs> <laughs> that worked surprisingly yes. well yes it right. did and the and you know in terms of this uh i like that you're using an archaic uh, radio voice to talk about bringing the connect controller the camera with the depth sensor and bringing it to the pc and that's the rumor coming out of korea um from game developer game pricks game pre game pre i'm, like I'm guessing <laughs> <laughs> just i don't know Sounds a little odd the way you said it. Uh, it's an X. I'm just saying. Grand Prix, not. I know, but actually I actually still it. remember the moment when I had a little, uh, little like fold out board game as a kid. Uh, it was a racing game, and I said, "I like this Grand Prix game." <laughs> and my parents both rushed to correct my pronunciation. Well, do you it's say pre? It's Grand Prix, you, honey. Uh, well, see, I don't know if this is Game Prix or Game know. Prix. Yeah. I'm gonna go. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Yes. The, uh, yeah. <laughs> Split the difference. It did make me blush. I don't know why. Uh, one of its titles, Game Pre, has one of its titles, Divine Soul, scheduled to support Connect. Now, is this blessed by Microsoft? Does it not seem strange that this obscure gaming company whose name I mispronounce in an awfully awkward way would be the ones breaking this news? Game Pre's Jason Lim uh, was quoted as saying, the Connect will soon be available as a new PC controller. Uh, but that's not Microsoft. Microsoft's not saying that. So, yeah, I don't see why it wouldn't. There's been all of these hacks uh, that have gotten the to the ability to read the USB output so that you can add a connect to a PC. I, th I can't believe that Microsoft wouldn't look at that and go, you know what? That's smart. Not let's, to mention let's Microsoft. Sell, let's sell more connects. Why Microsoft not? kind of put themselves behind the fact that you can go ahead and use the connect for all these other reasons. So right. if it's that successful, they why do want to use the Microsoft connect to sell Xbox 360s. That's true. So if they see this as undermining that somehow, yeah, uh, then they might uh, back off of it. But I, I don't see it that way personally. I'm like, you'll sell more connects if you're able right. to use it with more devices. Right, and you would think that. Well, what, what would be the downside of this for them? I mean, are they subsidizing well, they, the it, cost of the camera to, you know, is, is 150 per Connect console? It may be a little bit of a Add loss on? leader. I don't know. I don't think it is, though, uh, yeah. if I recall correctly. I think what they want is they want to sell the bundle. Yeah. Because if you sell the bundle, then you sell a game, you sell an Xbox, you sell a Connect, and then you can sell a bunch of games to them. If somebody buys a Connect and uses it on their PC, you're not buying games from Microsoft. Well, that's a business model perhaps they need to look at. Another business model to look at is uptime. Uh, Skype is having a problem with that today. Uh, they appear to be suffering an outage. 
We've uh, we've had troubles up with it here at Twit. We had we had to use some other services uh, today because Skype is not consistently maintaining a connection. They have a blog posting up from Peter Parks who says uh, who explains that Skype is not a network like a conventional phone or IM. It relies on millions of individuals because Skype is P2P. You are passing bits of other people's phone calls through your Skype, essentially while while you're operating. Uh, if he, he goes on in the post, if you want to talk to someone and your Skype app can't find them immediately, your computer or phone will first try to find a super node to figure out how to reach them. Under normal circumstances, there are a large number of super nodes available. Unfortunately, today, many of them were taken offline by a problem affecting some versions of Skype. As Skype relies on being able to maintain contact with super nodes, it may appear offline for some of you. Thing is, it's appearing offline for almost everyone. Right. And it seems like the problem is that you can't log in, mm -hmm. which could be a problem with the super nodes because the super nodes provide that table, that lookup table for logging in. Uh, but the idea with a peer to peer network is that it would be resilient and it shouldn't go down very easily. The weird thing is, is as you mentioned, there should be a redundancy with this many millions of users. Secondly, what buggy software where did this come from it, it doesn't seem from what i've been able to ascertain and i called the skype people and i think they're busy they haven't gotten back to me but uh basically i don't see a, any kind of an update that would have caused some new bugginess to come in um i don't know there's something about this it's a little bit weird uh the enterprise version of skype is still having problems even though skype says that the mega super node monster notoramas are up and doing the right. job Right. they were creating what they called mega super nodes of their own so they wouldn't have to rely on actual Skypes out in the wild. Uh, but Leo, I was talking to Leo right before the show started, and he's suspicious. He thinks there's more to this story than just the super node excuse. He's, he doesn't see why you would have this massive of a problem. Read Right Web estimates 20 million folks have lost their connection so far today. That's a massive amount of people. You'd have to have, and, and some people are saying Skype is crashing. So there, you know, that lends credence to the Skype story. Like, hey, we got, we've got a lot of crashing Skypes out there. But you have so many that aren't. Something's it weird. does seem like maybe there's more to this story somehow. I mean, is it, and the other thing that will be fascinating as this plays out is Skype has become such a utility. How did this really influence businesses, individuals, so many people who rely on it for communications? Um, you know, this is a big this is a big outage as compared to something like. Facebook. I mean, Facebook is, oh, my God, it's down. Productivity goes up. Uh, you know, people joke about it. But when Skype goes down, there are so many uses. I think it will, the ripple effects may be um, something that we look at tomorrow. Tony Bates, Skype chief executive officer, has come out and apologized in a public statement, says they're looking at the problem. Doesn't seem like they've fixed the problem yet. And I have to say, they may not know what the problem is. They may have thought it was the super nodes put up these mega super nodes, found out that doesn't fix the problem. They may not have figured out what it is yet. So mm -hmm. by the time you read this, that you may have known. Uh, interesting side note to this, uh, a study came out from Centers for Disease Control and Prevention that 51% of 25 to 29-year-olds live in households that do not have a landline. Uh, not that they're relying on Skype necessarily. They're probably relying on mobile phones. But, you know, like you're saying, Becky, when Skype goes down, it's a bigger deal than it used to be. Or Magic Jack. Uh, <laughs> I think that most of them have Magic Jack. I don't um, think that most of them. I think have they all magic have jack. Magic Jack. Nobody has Magic Jack. Magic Jack is huge. Um, <laughs> yes, I know you have Magic Jack. You one person. No, don't say nobody. I have Magic Jack. Uh, the Tom, email's Mary. already been sent. Tom. It's too late. Oh. He pa that person paused the podcast. Yeah, exactly. You just pissed off the whole Magic Jack contingent. Way to go, Merritt. Put this in perspective. Uh, Pingdom.com, uh, the Royal Pingdom blog, has a. Uh, a list that they'll have to update now of the major incidents on the internet in 2010. Uh, Wikipedia failed on a on a failover, uh, so that you, Wikipedia broke in March. WordPress.com had a big blog crash earlier this year. Gmail's been out several times. There was an actual car crash that triggered an Amazon power outage, and that had their data center go down. Love that one. Facebook had a had crash. a horrible outage in September. Their worst outage in four years. Twitter. I mean, it's become synonymous with outages over the fail years. Fail whale, fail whale. So, you know, frankly, Skype's not had an outage in quite a long time. That's true. They were due. Not, yeah, They had exactly. to get it in by the end of the year. It was a, it's kind of a mellow day. Uh, speaking of mellow, you can listen to some mellow tunes on your new Sony Curiosity Music Service launching in the UK and Ireland today and rolling out in the rest of the world in 2011. Hey, will that work on my Walkman? 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they stopped making yeah. those. Yeah. Well. Oh. Uh, service offers six million songs oh. from top labels, including. Uh, so Ken Shepherdson, our engineer, just brought us a magic jack. Magic Look, it jack. exists. Yeah, uh, music Unlimited is to deliver that content to a variety of devices. Uh, service works with 2010 models of Sony's HD TV, Blu-ray players, and home theater systems. PlayStation 3 consoles and PCs doesn't say anything about Walkman. Sadly, it won't work with the old Walkman. Okay, th there are some issues with this, though, because, uh, okay, if, I mean, first of all, it is Sony. They they are uniquely poised to make deals with music labels and create a technology around it. So that is a success, no? Um, yes. Well, that's an interesting thing, right? We don't have uh, Spotify in the United States. Uh, Apple has not been able to come to an agreement to stream but Sony seems to have gotten... This isn't, by the way, if you thought, oh, it's just Sony Music. No, it's all the major labels and some indies. Yeah. So this is six million some songs for four pounds per month for the basic service or 10 pounds for a premium. But there's a problem with this, which is, according to Silicon Alley Insider, this service won't work on most mobile phones in the UK. No, this is for your home service. Right. Yeah. So that's kind of dumb. Um, and I don't know. It just, day late and a dollar short in some senses. Do you think that this is? I have a, I have a sneaking suspicion. I don't know if this is true or not, but I have a, a sneaking suspicion that the, the music industry has decided, hold on, before we start licensing Pandora and Apple and Spotify anymore, maybe we should try to make money off this ourselves because we're the music companies. Let's cut out the middlemen, and this is the first attempt at that. And maybe we'll see some of these from Universal and others as well. Yeah, try make it a little more functional. People are listening to the music on the mobile these Well, days. you know, Sony, they like to be the proprietary. Right. You know? Well, that's the one place where I see, like, this could... And they don't own Sony Ericsson. Sony Ericsson is a joint. But they should make nice-nice. And there are people who like Sony to live... Sony can't even make nice within their department. That is true. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but they there are people who live in the Sony ecosystem. You know, do you, do you know these people who are only going to buy a Sony laptop, oh, yeah. only going to buy a Sony TV, and they only have a Sony system at home? Maybe it's their home theater system, and they've got that tied in. So I could see that there are, there's just people in that Sony ecosystem who would buy into this. But I don't see it as being, you know... Spotify worthy or even Pandora worthy. Yeah, but if they can uh, eventually cut out the Groove Sharks and the Pandoras uh, and not strike any new deals, then maybe they can just force you to listen to them. Yeah, good luck. Put that horse back in the barn there, Sony. Yeah, exactly. All right, take a break and uh, thanks, Slingbox. This episode of Tech News Today brought to you by Slingbox. Just in time for the holiday, Slingbox introduced their new iPad app. You can now watch the Slingbox on the iPad in true full iPad form. You don't. You could use the uh, the Slingbox iPhone app on the iPad before, but now you've got a native iPad app. Watch your home TV on your iPad anywhere you take it. It's a great holiday gift idea. You can find Slingbox or see a demo at Best Buy. Check it out at Slingbox.com. Slingbox and your home TV now appearing on iPads everywhere. It's like having a TV you can take all over the house. Very nice. You may have heard a little bit about net neutrality yesterday, mm. especially if you listen to the show or any other technology <laughs> show. <laughs> or any other show. It actually made a lot of the mainstream media. Yeah, it did. Paid attention. Uh, the, they have not finished releasing the guidelines that they approved yesterday. They are putting them out in dribs and drabs. Uh, but some details are coming out. They One of the details is that uh, Engadget reports that they did not impose stricter net neutrality regulations on wireless. They left it exempt to a lot of the rules because Android is open. Love this. Here's the paragraph. We recognize there have been meaningful recent moves towards openness, including the introduction of open operating systems like Android. In addition, we anticipate soon seeing the effects on the market of the openness condition we imposed on mobile providers that operate in the upper 700 megahertz C-block spectrum. So what they're talking about there is they sold off some spectrum for wireless companies to use to broadcast their cell phones uh, through, but they said you have to have open access. You have to sell that access to other wireless companies. That part makes sense. They may say, well, you know what? We've got this open access provision. Maybe that will help force some openness without us having to regulate. I like that. I think that's the right way to go. But this sort of don't look at the left hand part of like, you know, there's recent moves towards openness like Android. Do I, never mind. Yes. Magic. Android well, has nothing to do <laughs> with wireless networking. Tom. No one has to approve those apps going in. So that means that there won't be any prioritization. That's not the network. 
That's like saying we don't need wireline regulation because there's Linux. <laughs> Listen, somebody believed that argument. Now, I have uh, I was listening to uh, public radio here in the Bay Area, and there's a show called uh, Forum. And they had a big discussion on net neutrality this morning with Declan McCullough from CNET. And then Timothy Wu, who wrote the uh, master switch, yep. uh, he coined the term net neutrality. He's somehow been involved in all this. And he said he's seen the new guidelines upside down on somebody's desk. Nah. So he hasn't seen the whole thing. But word on the street is that the wireless provisions are stricter and that they will come out with more teeth. That's the rumor. We'll see. Believe when you see it. You know that they're going to dump all this stuff at 5 o'clock on Christmas Eve so that nobody pays any attention to it. But that was one of the other things that came out of the show. Apparently, the, the uh, specifics on what they have released so far were given to the dissenting members of the council at 1142 the night before Oh, yeah, the they meeting. were complaining about that yesterday. That's crazy. Yeah, I saw that. That's just weirdly partisan. Even if it was a well, mistake, that's just dumb. That's also, that's also not exactly what happened. The final text was given at 11.45 p.m. That is, that we don't know exactly how much that differed from the text that, that they've had for weeks and weeks because the first round of text was given out in, like, December 7th. So if it was like... This is net neutrality. The, this is not emergency response to an earthquake. Here's the final text, the meaning, like, years. we justified the paragraphs, would make absolutely no difference but give you a great reason to complain... If it's like, oh, we changed substantial paragraphs, then that's different. I have a feeling because they didn't cause a bigger stink. They're just using it to complain after the fact that there was no substantial change to those guidelines. They were exactly the same guidelines they'd seen for weeks, but just prettied up with some nice bolding or something like that. So they were ready to be given out. I, I think that's a red herring. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't disagree. I just think it just amazes me that something as boring as net neutrality has become such a hot button politically. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think it's important, but really? I think it's stupid of the commissioner to give his final revision that late because yeah. it gives them a, a reason to complain. You don't yeah. you don't want that. No. Uh, but back to the actual rules as we get them slowly, since they, they gave them to the opposition at 1145, but they haven't given them to the public yet. I'm telling you, it's 449 on Christmas Eve. They're coming out. A person engaged in the provision of fixed broadband internet... Uh, shall not unreasonably discriminate in transmitting lawful network traffic over a consumer's broadband internet access service. Reasonable network management shall not constitute unreasonable dis discrimination. Uh, a lot of people have said, well, that's paid prioritization. You're allowing paid prioritization. Further explanation of the practice seems to say no. Uh, legitimate network management purpose includes network security, address traffic, harm, addressing traffic harmful to the network like denial of service, traffic that's unwanted by users, uh, pro traffic such as providing services or capabilities consistent with the user choice, that's all okay. Right. Prioritization uh, is okay. But Paid prioritization exactly. is not okay. And I thought that one of the good analogies about this and really something that for people who believe in net neutrality, this is one of the big scare points is, okay, Comcast and NBC merging. NBC gets to throw a little money or, you know, has a, a relationship with Comcast, so their video gets delivered faster. No, that, not okay. But, like you said, there are a lot of good instances. Practicing telemedicine remotely, you want that surgeon to have prioritized traffic. Why is it a problem if NBC gets their video Hey, delivered faster. Don't make me give the peacock the beat down, okay? I work for the competitor. <laughs> That's true. I shouldn't ask you. <laughs> Why is it a problem if ABC gets their uh, video delivered faster? If they pay for it. That's not a benefit to the consumer. Well, we don't have time to get into that. Only your Fords can drive in the fast lane on the bridge. I mean, I'm all down for Ford, but I, I don't drive one. Federal communicate. Uh, there's a, a good article on eWeek today, too, saying that this, this is going to face a lot of lawsuits right out of the gate. And Gadget has a roundup of the uh, carrier's reactions. Sprint commended the FCC. T-Mobile kind of hedged and said, we need some uh, time to look this over. AT&T called it a fair middle ground, but railed about radical voices and heavy-handed government regulation. That doesn't sound like a fair middle ground. <laughs> um, and Verizon issued what Gadget calls a veiled threat to sue everyone. Yeah, see, that's how I read it when I saw it yesterday. It was basically like, this is going to end up in litigation. And it was an open door to further actions. We'll see you in federal court. Yeah. You can't handle the net neutrality. All right. On to, uh, you know, net neutrality and WikiLeaks. That's all you get these days <laughs> as, we, as we wind up the years. It's almost Christmas, people. Spain killed a controversial anti-P2P bill that would have made it easier to shut down websites that link to infringing content. 
Uh, the move was a blow to the socialist government. The amendment called the Sinde Law, uh, after Spain's current culture minister, was actually an amendment to the Sustainable Economy Bill and would have set up a new committee that could drop lists of sites which largely linked to infringing content, and those sites would then go to a Madrid court, and the court would decide whether to block them or not. Actually, as these sorts of things go, not the worst law that I've ever heard about, but it turns out WikiLeaks uh, leaks showed that all of this was pushed for by the United States. Right. They uh, had threatened the, the Spanish saying, hey, you, you guys are notorious for not respecting uh, intellectual property rights holders. So you need to drop the hammer, get a little tougher or else we're going to put you on a special list. We're going to put you on the Section 301 <gasps> watch list. And that would put you right between Romania and Tajikistan. Not Section 301. Yes. And, you know, that carries some serious penalties. Hillary Clinton comes to your country with a ruler. I don't know. Like, it means publicly that the United States says nasty things about you. Apparently. And as we know from WikiLeaks, nobody likes nasty things to be said about them in public. No. But apparently being um, chastised by the U.S. leads your uh, government to go in the exact opposite direction. Because that's what they really weren't into this well, law after Well, if you're chastised in private... Yeah. That's different than if your WikiLeaks are published. Uh, Norwegian newspaper Often Posten has managed to get a hold of the entire 250,000 cable leak without WikiLeaks permission. So oh, WikiLeaks leakers has a leak. Got leaked. Mm -hmm. They won't say Wait, how they got the access, and WikiLeaks won't either. Um, but one could guess, according to Boing Boing, that the database... Uh, in which the WikiLeaks are stored might be with on a server in Norway. And these aren't the redacted uh, excerpts. No, this, this is, is the full-on stuff. mother load. What WikiLeaks has been doing is giving pieces of this out every day, some of it to publications first so they can go through it. Uh, Norway says, we're not waiting. We're going to look through this ourselves, all 250,000, and post them when we want. We're not going to follow your plan, Julian Assange. We're going to Assange you. Oh, Assange. We're going to assange you. We're going to Assange you. Also, uh, a funny little note here. The CIA must have a sense of humor because they have launched the WikiLeaks Task Force. And because the CIA is acronym crazy, the acronym for the WikiLeaks Task Force is, of course, WTF. Of course it is. Um, well, you know, there's so many ways to question the wisdom of this, but WTF. I, I could that. say that CIA's reaction to WikiLeaks is probably WTF. I would. I think it's appropriate. Maybe they actually have a sense of humor about this. All right, I got a little pattern recognition going on. Follow me on okay, this rumor, okay? okay? okay. With you. Uh, Boy Genius Report reports that Verizon wireless branded Windows Phone 7 apps have surfaced in the Windows Phone marketplace. Mm, Verizon so that indicates Windows Phone 7. We knew a Verizon Windows Phone 7 was coming after the first of the year. This would imply that maybe it's coming very soon. Mm. Also, Wall Street Journal reporting that Verizon will sell a Motorola 4G phone. Ooh. Okay. On its LTE you network. You see a corollary here. Exactly. Mm. Now, separately... We've got a Samsung LTE phone with a front-facing camera being leaked by Boy Genius Report. Mm -hmm. But that Samsung LTE phone with the front-facing camera looks like it's Android. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. that, so, so we can count that out. That so, Okay, so take us back to the Verizon yeah. Motorola 4G phone and the Verizon Windows phone. Motorola also putting out a trademark worldwide in multiple nations for XOOM, Zoom. 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 Motorola Zoom. doesn't usually file trademarks unless they're going to use them. Some companies file them all the time and then never right. use them. Motorola doesn't do that. And they filed one in New Zealand, uh, the only mark that the company has filed for in New Zealand this year. So that suggests a worldwide release of a product. You're going deep on LTE this one. LTE is a worldwide standard. Mm -hmm. Motorola releases a Windows phone that's on LTE with the name Zoom. I know Pocket now says it's going to be a Motorola tablet because it's worldwide, but I'm just saying, pattern recognition mm. here. Motorola also acquired cloud storage startup Zector. Zector. Zector Zoom operates Zector. Zumo Drive and Zumo Cast. And what, you've been doing technology Zoom. news for 10 years, both of you, and you still laugh at these names? I, like, this is the world <laughs> we live in. These don't even strike me as odd in this day and age. It's just Sumo. Just the Sumo. When Who thinks that's a good marketing ploy? Zumo. Sumo. Zumo Drive Zumo. and Zumo Cast. Uh, 
could enhance Motorola Mobility's mobile content. Motorola Mobility being the motor, mobile version of, of So this Motorola. is like a mobile me for the Motorola. Yeah, it allows you to sync playlists, images, and other digital contests between devices. So I'm thinking the Motorola Zoom on Windows Phone 7 with Zoom coming out with Zumo Drive and Zumo Cast. Zoom, Zoom? Except Zumo Drive and Zumo Cast are spelled X O O M. Whoa. Now. Is it going to be X U N E? The Zune? Yes. <laughs> and Motorola's bland, Zune? branded version of Zune is X U N E. Zune. Zoom. Um, Tom, that is deductive reasoning at its finest. I think you should give yourself a pat on the back. I, if any of if it comes I were more flexible, true, yeah, I will. Over there. I'll try to work <laughs> on that. up there, bud. Can't well, we'll see at CES, won't we? I mean, the I don't know if we. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if we'll hear about a Verizon Windows phone at CES or not. That'd be good, that'd be a good place. Verizon's there doing a keynote. Windows, Microsoft's do it there doing a keynote. Why not? We yeah. should find that out. What though. else is Microsoft going to announce? They got yeah, some tablety they, stuff coming out. Otherwise, they, they wait some, till Mobile World Congress or just some off off time. Mobile World Congress just sounds like something right out of Star Wars. Who the hell makes up these names? <laughs> Have you Come never on. been to Mobile World again? These are not odd names in our land. These are odd names. No, they're not. These are perfectly... Mobile you know, World Congress has been around for years. Are you new? Weird. No, it's just weird to me to think of it in the context. It's a Congress. What? <laughs> a what? Congress of the mobile world. Will the Starship Commanders be there? Yes. <laughs> Apparently. That's what That's makes why it people so take cool. it very seriously. You know, it's a slow news day, and it's a good thing that... <laughs> It is, because you have a wild hair. That's all I can say. I mean, yes, you also have one eyebrow out of control. I'm like looking, are, like, really? You do. do I need you to... have one crazy eyebrow, but you also were just like on a tear. So I like it. Go all right. It. Go with it. <laughs> this episode of Tech News Today is brought to you by the $200 million Eco Imagination Challenge from GE. You've heard us talk about it before. It's a way to encourage innovation that helps the environment, helps you save money on power, helps save power. They have $200 million to invest in great ideas for improving the way energy is produced, transferred, and consumed. Uh, one investment category is renewables. GE wants to encourage better ways to integrate renewable energy into our power grid. That energy, which comes from wind, water, and sun. Second investment category is grid efficiency. GE wants to convert the smart grid to digital energy. That saves you money and reduce wastes. And eco homes and buildings. Talk about saving you money. Uh, you want to get rid of higher energy costs, you want some innovation in that area. So GE and its partners are making $200 million available to invest in each of these areas. And to learn more and read the ideas and comment on them, you can go to ecomagination.com slash challenge. Meet the winners. Take a look at their proposals. You can make comments on them as well. Uh, and we thank GE for their support. Ecomagination.com slash challenge. We thank them for supporting not only this show, but Green Tech Today yep. as well. And there's a great episode up right now. Dr. Kiki went out and checked out the Nissan Leaf. And um, so go check out Green Tech Today if you want to learn more about um, energy innovation. This is really the geek's take on, uh, on green energy. Time for the news views. Bad news for advocates of free speech and Johns who travel frequently. Craigslist adult services section is now out of business worldwide. Four months ago, the service closed in the U.S., and now it's down globally, according to an official from Craigslist. He told the Connecticut Attorney General Richard Blumenthal this yesterday. And Blumenthal then called it another important step in the ongoing fight to more effectively screen and stop pernicious prostitution ads. And I just keep myself out of trouble on commenting about this story. I'm just going to say pernicious, pernicious prostitution. Fantastic alliteration. Pernicious prostitution promotion. That's right. Would have been even better. No, come on, Blumenthal, get it together. Ah, it's that time of year, folks. Gather around, get up close to your podcast receiver, or your screen. It's time to think back on 2010 and guess the most pirated film of the year. Mm. According to TourandFreak.com, the most pirated film award what goes to Avatar <gasps> and James Cameron. Oh. Downloaded over 16 million honor. times from BitTorrent alone. Second place went to Kick-Ass, the comic book action film with 11.4 million downloads, followed by Leonardo DiCaprio and Inception with 9.7 million. Last year's top pirated film was Star Trek, the reboot, which came close to 11 million downloads. So 16 million Avatar really really beat it. Cameron said that 3D was going to be the thing that saved the industry from piracy. You know, what this shows <laughs> is that that's not why people download these movies. Yeah. They're downloading them because they're free. Yeah. Because they want to watch them in an imperfect way and risk getting a virus. Right. It's not about owning the movie. It's not about seeing it. It's not the same reason you pay to see a movie. Right. There is a distinct difference there that Warner Brothers actually has started to pay it, or Time Warner has started to pay attention to 
uh, and exploit. And if they can do that, doesn't mean that they should be okay with illegal downloads, but if they can exploit that difference, they can learn something. That's all I'm saying. Interesting, Tom. That's all he's saying. Hey, you want to outfit, outwit counterfeiters? Yes. Do you? Do you, you want to outwit the counterfeiters? Well, you could also electronically track bills. You could make some really cool high-tech money by doing this. Put thin film transistors, TFTs, 250 nanometers thick into your bills. You could do that. German and Japanese researchers are confabbing on just this in a project that would use voltages of just three volts, which could be transmitted wirelessly by an external reader, uh, like the kind that communicates with RFID tags. And I say, take that, international money launderers, if it ever actually happens. Mm, clean money. Toshiba's reselling its Nagasaki manufacturing plant. They're selling it back to Sony for 50 billion yen. Uh, Toshiba originally bought it for 90 billion yen, so Sony's making out like a bandit. Uh, speculation that they might build more CMOS chips there. Sony told the Nikkei Business Daily it would repurpose the facility to produce HD image sensors for cameras and smartphones. Uh, so, anyway, looks like Sony's got another fab, and they uh, saved quite a bit of money by loaning it to Toshiba for a while. Everything old is new again. Uh, Google Wave. It's safe in the open source arms of Apache these days, but a little googly bit of it survives in the Google shared spaces. Uh, Wave gadgets have been given a standalone home here. The idea being you create a space, invite some people, and then stop, collaborate, and uh, not listen? No, share. 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 Probably, okay, Tom Rock. Maybe listen to him. He just likes the um, Ice Ice Baby. Basically, we're talking about a task-focused fo version of Wave. That's kind of cool. Lives on. Yeah. Okay. That seems like a good use for Wave. Yeah. Uh, you know when you have a fight with a friend and then they start pulling in your other friend, they're like, wait, they had nothing to do with this Hate fight. That. Activision's fight with Infinity Ward heads Jason West and Vince Zampella just yanked in Electronic Arts. Activision claims Infinity Ward conspired with EA on the possibility of creating an independent game studio that would steal Activision employees. That's so, that's so nasty. I can't what? believe EA did that. Oh, my that. God. Oh, my God. Did you hear? Yeah. If you live in a household with someone who owns a tablet or an e-reader, you're at a greater risk of owning one yourself. <gasps> yeah, I know. According to pollster YouGov, 17% of iPad owners have more than one iPad in their home. And 15% of Kindle owners have more than one unit. Only 21% of second tablet owners got them as gifts. And I will add my little tip in case you didn't know this. If you get a Kindle for someone else in your family this year... Register that Kindle to your account, and then you can share books. Buy them once, read them on multiple Kindles. Amazon's cool with that. Unless your wife wants her own account. Yeah, that, it, Eileen, why? Mark Hurd, the former mm -hmm. Hewlett Packard chief executive, is fighting to keep private a letter uh, that led to his resignation. The eight-page letter in which former HP contractor Jody Fisher accused Mr. Hurd of sexual harassment is currently under seal in Delaware's Court of Chancery. The law firm for the plaintiff in the lawsuit said in November it intended to make the letter public. Earlier this month, Mr. Hurd's lawyers filed a motion to keep the letter under wraps. Something weird is going on with this story. Mm -hmm. There's something... What's in the letter? I don't know. This whole... The Perhaps consultant, an anagram. This, you don't see my conspiracy theory. I'm not, I'm not buying this one yet. There's something weird. I'm telling you. This story is going to unfold. This is like the FaceTime open protocol. You know it's one of those things. I get a bee in yeah. my bonnet and I can't let it go. Uh, something yeah. with this herd fisher... It's like a People Magazine story, but there's something. It's like a it's a, the it's herd a locker. It's the herd locker. <laughs> you love that <laughs> the herd locker. Uh, and also, uh, this this uh, broke earlier today. Uh, Cable Town will not be allowed to buy NBC, <laughs> 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 or I, I, they're called Comcast when you're not watching Thirty Rock. Oh, <laughs> uh, until after that, that decision won't come down until after the first of the year. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, finally, our uh, our weird science weird for the science, day science. is. Uh, a, a way to sequence a genome in your own home here for cheap. We're going to see this on, like, you know, for 1995 Order Now commercials pretty soon. It's, a, it's an infomercial. Don't you hate it when you don't know what your genome is? <laughs> Scientists from Imperial College London have just announced the development of a prototype device that could lead to technology capable of sequencing the human genome within minutes at the cost of just a few dollars. Plus shipping and handling. <laughs> Order Now. <laughs> My theory on this is that it puts a uh, Mrs. Google chick, 23 and me, out of business. It's like, oh, hey, I guess she was out of business when she messed up everything. Well, you know what? It's all about the interpretation. So you can sequence it, but if you don't know what it means, right. maybe 23 and me can still have a business model of interpreting your results right. for you. Right. 
Anyway, mm. uh, it's 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 a big advance. Do you uh, we're making jokes. Ab- we're do- making jokes about home genome use, but this is going to be incredibly helpful in the lab. Do what? Do you think? Do you really? Do you see this? Do I, I mean, see what? Do you want to know what what your you know, what the predictions are from your DNA you know, about. This bothers me about this story because everybody immediately goes, well, what about, I don't want to know about, why would I want to know about my genome? This isn't even about that, really. It's about research. It's about being able to sequence genomes and figure out what different genes do and how they work and develop medicines off of them. The last thing this is for is sequencing your genome particularly just because you're curious. I'm so curious. Yeah. It's, well, because it, at, at a certain point, it comes down to like those um, kits where you swab the inside of your dog, your mutt's mouth, yeah. to find out what his breeds are. I would like to find out what breed I am. I would too. <laughs> yeah. It's a hairy one. <laughs> <laughs> what is up with you today? That's the second time. Now, I need, now I'm getting paranoid. I need clippers. <laughs> On to the calendar. <laughs> DC Universe Online is going to launch January 11th. This is the long-awaited superhero and massively multiplayer role-playing game. Tom is out of his mind. His wild hair is going wilder. <laughs> Don't pull them all off, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's crying now because he just pulled his eyebrow Just continue out. with your calendar. No, he's hurt now. <laughs> uh, so for you comic playing MMO fans, that's a big deal, January 11th. Nexus S, getting its first update over the air. Uh, is that happening today, Tom? Yeah, that's supposed to happen. Uh, that's supposed to be happening now. Check your Nexus S. Quick, quick, quick. There's something happening. And uh, you know what? It's almost Christmas. Yay. If you go to Amazon and order as late as 7 p.m. tonight, Wednesday, Pacific time, you still get the free two-day shipping, and it'll make it in time for, for Prime, December 24th. Prime. Or just in general. Prime, baby. Prime. Free two-day shipping if you're Prime. You know the Prime. Oh, I know the Prime. Uh, I dig the Prime. If you don't know the Prime, it means you pay up front for all your <laughs> shipping for the year. and then you uh, they, they knew the Prime. They knew the Prime. It, um, by the way, the amount of desperate Amazon shopping I've been doing yes. in the last 24 hours. Me too. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> frightened. How did I help America find their... Dang Christmas gifts, and I didn't get all mine done by Becky's now. Becky's pulling us out of the recession right now. <laughs> Let's just say I have about 20 packages being shipped to Twit tomorrow. <laughs> so You and me both, buddy. You and me both. We're, we're not going to have room to walk around in here tomorrow. I no. <laughs> On to the voicemail, 260-TNT show. Uh, we've got a couple of... Of really depressing takes, but very realistic checks on the whole net neutrality mm-hmm. debate. We'll start with this one from Anonymous. Anonymous coward. Hey, gang, I just wanted to... Uh, toss in my two cents on your comments about uh, freedom on the internet uh, and the free market and all that. No market is free once it gets big enough to get on the radar because then everybody comes in, all the power players, and they want to make it theirs. So I'm surprised the net lasted as long as it did as a reasonably free market. No, it's not over. Come on. Uh, He's kind of right, but I don't think it's over as a free market. I think I think it does have resilience that will it, maybe not the entire internet will always be as free as it was idealized in the '90s, but but there will always be a part of it that can't be controlled. Yeah, and I mean, in some senses, I feel like this particular net neutrality issue. It's I don't think there's going to be a massive change. I think it's just putting businesses on notice. You know what's right and what's wrong. We do too. Don't do it. I really think that's how it's going to play out. Well, let's let's then let's let's hear our second buzzkill voicemail from Todd. Hey, this message is for Jason and the Howlets. Just wanted oh, to make hey. the point that nothing really consumer friendly is going to happen on net neutrality, as long as businesses through lobbyists have so much of the politicians' mind space. You know, they don't really care so much about what you know their constituents think because we're gerrymandered into complete disenfranchisement. All right, have a good show. Yeah. <laughs> We're gerrymandered. Totally right. Todd. This was this was Waz's thing that he wrote um, in his um, sort of, I don't know if you would call it a treatise on net neutrality, but he said he just doesn't want to feel like it's a lobbying issue. He doesn't want to feel like... That's what it feels like right now, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that's the, you know, the Google-Verizon collusion, I mean, partnership to talk to, to talk to Washington on this. I don't, I mean, that's where it just gets so messy these days. If you don't trust big business and you don't, and, and you don't, want 
their presence, then you're thinking, okay, we really need net neutrality. And if you don't trust the government, then you're saying we really don't want net neutrality. And I think that's why this has become so polarizing well, is we, that that's a state of the country right now. You can See, that's the problem is they're trying to cast it as this political issue mm. of you're either for Obamacare or against Obamacare. And that's right. not what net neutrality, I can want net neutrality to happen without wanting the government to enforce it. Right. I do want the ability to get any website that is connected to the internet at any time at exactly the same at speed as everything else. Right. But I may not think the FCC's rules are the best way to get it. And that's why the, the EFF standing up and saying, you know, we were totally for net neutrality in a lot of ways, but we don't like the government mandating how this works out. Yeah. They think it's a Trojan. And I think this is just a big mess at this point in time that either will have, have no impact at all or it'll play out messy, messy, and we'll be talking about it for years. On to the emails, TNT at twit.tv. Uh, our first one comes from Nathaniel in England who says, Hi, TNT chaps. It was a bit of political argy-bargy last night on this side of the pond. Um, over News Corporation's attempt to fully take over B Sky B, the result of which means it is now more likely to be green lighted, decision due in January. B Sky B owns Sky, uh, which is sort of like DirecTV here in the United States. They beam you uh, television uh, through the satellite. This may, may be of interest to you guys because it would mean News Corporation will have a paywall with B Sky B that has millions of subscribers for catch up slash video on demand services. So I guess that's an extra thing that B Sky B gives you. And a paywall with their newspaper division, that's the Times of London, mm -hmm. that has about two subscribers, according to Nathaniel. Right. Uh, so post takeover comes, Rupert, Mur Rupert Murdoch's master plan. News Corporation gives the B Sky B subscribers access to the newspaper division's content, and in one swoop, Rupert has again saved print journalism from the apocalypse. Technically, his business model for the Times still would have failed, in my view. But in business, it doesn't matter how you get the numbers as long as you do. And I think it is a move to watch out for. This is, I mean, this is fascinating, too, because if I understand this correctly, basically what he's doing is saying, we're going to throw in the sweetener of giving you access to the Times behind the paywall. It's a marketing ploy, and therefore we can say that the paywall works. Yeah. Uh, it's it's exactly what what Nathaniel is proposing here, and uh, I I could see that happening. Whether it works or not, I don't know. Hey, you know what? They'll make it work on the books. They'll write it all off as an expense for marketing and blah blah blah. Stockholder wise, they might be able to fool you. I don't know about advertiser wise though. Yeah, not so much. Not so much. This one is from Kyle Hasegawa, um, who says he's in Tokyo, Japan. But I think Kyle has written the show before, and he's from Hawaii because he says Aloha TNT crew. About that Windows port to the ARM architecture you guys spoke about yesterday. <laughs> hey, I'm not going to read the whole thing in Pigeon, okay? I just was opening up because Tom did the thing before in the whole British accent, whatever. <laughs> Most people think of ARM processors as mobile chips, but the architecture is also making significant advances into the data center due to its significant energy efficiency over x86 chips that are common today. Just Google ARM server and you'll see what I mean. The only architecture supported by Windows Server are x86, 32, and 64-bit, and Itanium, which means Microsoft would get no share of this burgeoning market set to be dominated by Linux. My guess is they're porting Windows Server to ARM, not Windows 7 for tablets. And that's what we were talking about yesterday. Uh huh. So that's kind of smart. I think Kyle's on to something here. I think that may be exactly what we hear at CES, which is, hey, we know you guys are putting ARM servers in there. Now you can run Windows Server on them just like you run them on x86. See? So if you want to move to that more power-efficient ARM processor server, you don't have to abandon your trusted friend. Keep it cool Windows. with Microsoft. Yeah. Keep it cool and low. Keep it cool and green, man. And finally, Eric Jones says, hi, Tom and cohorts. In reference to your video caller about blocking of news sites and the declassification of information, one of the first things they teach you is publication does not mean declassification. Won't matter how much classified gets loose, it won't be declassified until the date stamp or the magic wand. We've heard that over and over. We get it. Okay, Eric, what's up with this? You might be surprised at how much stuff is known from World War II that was still classified in the 1980s, even though it was considered common knowledge and possibly taught in history classes. Hmm. Does that mean that you couldn't go to a history class if you were... Working on classified See? stuff? No, that was not an excuse. These for the rules fly. need to be adjusted for the modern age, I have a feeling. Yeah, well, yeah, love I'm not the man to do it, though. By the way, I have to say, we've been called TNT Chaps, TNT Crew, TNT Cohorts, and the Howlettes today. I know. I like the Howlettes the I, best. I think you, I would understand I think that, that. I think that one's going to stick. Okay. Just Probably. knowing. The there you go. Going forward. On behalf of the other Howlettes, I wish you a happy holidays. 
Uh, we will be back tomorrow with another show, though. TNT at twit.tv is our email address. 260 TNT show is the phone number. And, of course, you can find us on the web at twit.tv slash TNT. We'll see you tomorrow. Happy Christmas. Well done. Those are howla hulas. Those are howlies. <laughs> howlies. <laughs> That's what nice. Jason and the howlies. There you That's go. Right. That's what you got, baby. <laughs>